uh, we can see that for the case of DFTS OFDM the mean power is more and for OFDM case for OFDM case uh, the mean power was 0.125 and yeah because the average power is more hence PAPR is lesser so few days back I was reading something about DFTS OFDM uh, and I got this question that how exactly the subcarriers are mapped in DFTS OFDM and also how exactly the PAPR reduction uh, is achieved in DFTS OFDM so in this video I'll try to focus and answer uh, these two questions OFDM has many advantages as we all know but few disadvantages also one of them is high PAPR which is peak to average power ratio and there are multiple advantages of having low PAPR like low PAPR allows power amplifier to operate with less nonlinear distortion at the same output back off like if I have uh, lower PAPR value then uh, I can keep output back off same but because the PAPR is low in that case the peak power uh, will not go to the saturation region every time hmm. other than that low PAPR signals can exploit more power efficient P operating points so it increases power efficiency actually and also low PAPR signal can operate PA at higher average power at the same distortion level okay because if the PAPR is low then instead of operating my PA here I can actually operate my PA at a higher power because in that case the probability of going into the saturation region will be lesser because the PAPR is lesser so this actually improves cell edge performance why because I can actually operate my PA at the higher power now let's understand the DFTS OFDM transmitter chain which will be important to understand if you want to understand more on the DFTS side uh, you can also look in uh, if you want to understand in more detail the fundamentals of the DFTS OFDM you can uh, watch my previous video which I will uh, give a link in the description and also you can click the i button so uh, I will go uh, I will try to summarize here the changes so one change is having an extra DFT block and another change is having a subcarrier allocation block so DFT uh, like if the if for OFDM uh, the IFFT we are taking of M point then in DFTS OFDM we first take a K point DFT and usually to get the PAPR reduction we keep K to be less than M which is actually the basic fundamental or the basic funda of DFTS OFDM and after that we do some subcarrier allocation on the K subcarriers if uh, for example the simplest allocation we can do like we can interleave actually the K subcarriers across M uh, subcarriers or we do some localization or we can actually zero pad the remaining like the uh, remaining M minus K we can just put the zeros so there are multiple techniques of doing the subcarrier allocation in this video I'll try to focus on two types of subcarrier allocation as we go further okay okay so first point let's understand that how DFT of lesser points in taken or what is the funda behind that so in that case I'll try to uh, take a very simple example in this case the final FFT size or as we saw in the previous figure the value of 8 I have taken as 8 okay so finally there will be 8 subcarriers 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay and let's assume that the DFT size or whatever we have said in the previous picture k is equals to 2 okay so here what we take that we will take two subcarriers take the DFT we will take the two subcarriers take the DFT and so on okay and in this case there is another concept like we are actually grouping two subcarriers here taking their DFT and then processing it like processing it means taking two subcarriers uh, taking their uh, or I'll not say subcarriers taking two points taking their DFT and then doing the subcarrier allocation and then doing the final F IFFT okay so this group of two subcarriers is actually the subband okay this is also known as sub band okay 
so uh, usually this is a specified uh, when we are implementing a system this is specified that how many subbands are there or what is the subband size so in that way if uh, one of the parameter is given and the final we know what is the value of m or what is the value of the final fft size ieft size then we can actually calculate the dft size dfts dft size yes okay yeah and now we will look into uh, how the subcarrier allocation is done so there are two types of subcarrier allocation one is localized one is distributed or interleaved okay so first let's uh, try to understand the localized case so in this case uh, these two um, points or these two set of points are belonging to two different subbands okay so for example uh, let's try to understand uh, or I'll, I'll try to name them by their colors okay so the first subband or the red subband uh, we, we take the group of those points put them collectively then take the blue one put them collectively and so on put the take the green take the magenta one and put them collectively another algorithm or another way to do it is doing the interleaving like take the first point from the red set take the first point from the blue set take the first point from the green set and so on and put them one by one okay so this is the interleaved way or distributed way of doing the subcarrier allocation both the algorithms or both the techniques have their merits and demerits and i think uh, in most of the implementation or in, in most of the technology localized is the chosen one but uh, as we will see further from the simulation results and from the research uh, results that better papr or the lower papr is achieved from the interleaved technique if we compare the interleaved and localized techniques okay so lower papr is achieved with the interleaved case okay to summarize these two concepts that in the dft is a spreading process and subcarriers are divided into k subbands and all subcarriers in each subband will go through m point dft in that case n is equals to we know we can easily now if you have understood this concept you will understand this equation also n is equals to k into m after the DFT on each subband, the n subcarriers will be will be reallocated into a vector, and subcarriers are allocated on one subband by one subband, or in an interleaved fashion. Okay, this is to summarize the DFT process and the subcarrier allocation process. Okay, so to see how uh, what will be the PAPR uh, for OFDM and DFTS case, and also in DFTS. Uh, the comparison of the PAPR between localized case and the interleaved case across the subbands. I had uh, written one MATLAB code and tried to uh, run the simulation, and then these are the results. So, in this case, on the x axis, x axis are the number of subbands, on the y axis, it is the PAPR in dB. Okay, in this case, the final FT size was 4096. So, we can see that obviously for the OFDM case, the PAPR is the highest which is which we obviously that's why we are actually uh, invented or that's why the dfts we are actually discussing the dfts ofdm technique to get the lower papr okay and because ofdm uh, papr does not depend on the number of subbands so so this red curve is the flat now blue one is for the localized case okay and green one is for the interleaved case okay and we can compare that the interleaved case has lower papr than the localized case okay and if we just stick to interleaved case then we can easily see that as we are increasing the number of subbands the papr performance is degrading or basically the papr is increasing when we are increasing the number of subbands If you look into the literature, then PAPR performance is usually measured in terms of CCDF function. CCDF is complementary cumulative distribution function. And if you, let me try to first tell you that how to read this curve. So this basically tells us that what is the probability that PAPR is greater than some reference PAPR, which is on the x-axis. 
So for example, if let's say our reference is 8 dB, then the value of CCDF tell me that, uh, let's take the example of this particular curve and let's assume that the value is 0.4. Okay, so this tells me that that 40% of the time or in 40% of the iterations, the PAPR is actually greater than 8 dB. Okay, so here we can see that the green curve, which is the DFTS OFDM interleaved with the least number of subband or the subband equals to 2 has the has sharp transitions or basically for higher values of PAPR, the CCDF is zero. So this uh, this curve also tells us that in uh, in terms for measuring or in terms of the PAPR performance, a DFTS OFTM with interleaved K, uh, sub -K allocation and with least number of sub bands is the best choice. Okay, so till now we have seen that how DFTS is actually done and how it is, uh, and we actually saw the results. That how much improvement it is giving but uh, if you have a question in your mind that how actually how exactly dfts is doing this then let's uh, try to understand that and the common notion is that dfts block introduced before the ift block cancels out the effect of ifft and hence papr is reduced okay so um, lesser like the difference between the DFTS size and the I50 size is actually proportional to the gain in the PAPR. But how all this is happening? So first, first let's understand the PAPR calculation of for OFDM uh, with FFT size equals to weight. So this is uh, this these values I have chosen for the case, for the use of simplicity. Uh, and uh, I, I will I will try to take I have taken actually the two examples first with OFDM. And then with DFTS OFDM with uh, subband equals to two, number of subband equals to two. Then assume all the symbols are equal to one, so that we can do our uh, calculations very easily. And yeah, uh, the PAPR is the maximum power or the peak power. This is the peak power, and this is the mean power or the average power. Okay, so this is peak power. A ratio of peak power to average power okay so first first let's uh, take the case for ofdm okay so ofdm is what i have an ifft block okay at this point these are the frequency domain symbols at this point these are the time domain symbols okay and this is a parseval's theorem or parseval's relation which is uh, Telling us the power and time domain. This is time domain power and this is the frequency domain power. Fine. So, in this case, let's uh, try to find out the average power because the examples that I have chosen have the same peak power. Okay. Uh, I have also ran this in MATLAB simulation and also verified from there that this example and the next uh, example for DFTS OFDM has the same peak power. Okay. Then, in that case, if DFTS OFDM is giving me gain in terms of PAPR, then its average power has to be more. Okay. So in this case, uh, what is the power? Uh, I, I'll try to calculate from this. So it is 1 by n. So it will be 1 by 8. I'm uh, calculating the average power. So it will be expected value of all the symbols power. These are the 8 symbols. Okay. So this will be equals to this 1 upon 8 belongs to this value 1 by n so it will be 1 by 8 multiplied by because this expectation and the number of symbols are 8 so 1 by 8 into 8 okay so this will be 1 upon 8 or 0.125 okay this is the mean power for OFDM case now let's go to the DFTS okay so now let's follow the same process for DFTS OFDM with number of subbands equals to 2 Okay, in this case, the time domain signal is the first column. It is all ones because uh, now our system is like first we take the DFT, then subcarrier mapping, SC mapping, then we take the final IFFT. Okay, so in this case, this is the time domain signal XN, this is the 
frequency domain signal which is represented by the second column then frequency domain signal let's say x prime k interleaved which is the third column and then the final let's say x prime n the time domain signal which is this one okay so in this case um, what is the so yeah if the number of subbands are two then first we take the four point dft of these points then a separate dft which is of four point of this of sorry of these points yeah so basically four points and four points so in this case k is equals to four which is the dft size okay so if we take the uh, one 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 dft of them then it will be like this and the second set will be like this okay so to calculate the mean power let's sketch this and calculate the average power of this case so again using the frequency domain expression of the from the parsevals theorem it will be 1 upon 8 this 1 upon 8 uh, 1 upon 8 is this because now we are taking the 8 point i 50 remember this is the 8 point i 50 okay expected value of 4 square plus 4 square plus then six zeros okay so this will be one upon eight into one upon eight because anyway there are eight samples total eight samples into 16 plus 16 32 so this will be 0. 0.5 okay so hence uh, we can see that for the case of dfts ofdm the mean power is more and for ofdm case for ofdm case uh, the mean power was 0. 0.125 and yeah, in this case, I have uh, these this specific example. The peak power is actually the same, which is because of this symbol. So yeah, because the average power is more, hence PAPR is lesser. So this example is just to get an intuition mathematically that how exactly DFTS OFDM is helping us to reduce the PAPR.